Hi guys, Sunny here, and uh, it's going to be a short video today, but it is my birthday soon, Woo! and my partner has bought me a present, a package from the spider shop. Um, so I just got this through the post, it's coming early, it's not my birthday quite yet, but we can't keep them in the box. So I thought I'd do a unboxing video essentially today. So if I just adjust the camera and see what we've got going on down here. So open up the box and we have a leaflet, green bottle blue, nice picture there. And that is the shop information. This is the second time I've got an order from them and I was very happy the first time. I bought loads the first time. We also got a uh, sticker, which is quite nice. Um, again with the logo, it's a Caribbean first colour, I believe. Something that I have also ordered from them. I also ordered a green bottle blue from them. Um, you'll see them in previous videos. And so today what we got is just two spiders. I don't know if you can read the vials. But essentially, they are the Flippidus Apachurus, Apachurus, the uh, Apache jumping spiders. So as you can see, they're quite small. Put that to the side. I have pre-made an enclosure. Ooh, I did this yesterday. I think it's quite nice. But I'm a bit concerned now because these holes that I made are probably a little bit possibly big. So let's open up one of these and see roughly how big they are. So I have to excuse my fingers. I've been playing with a puppy and I've got lots of cuts and stuff all over it. So I'm just going to have the tweezers. Yes, very small. Bit concerned that those holes are actually a bit too big now. I don't know if you can see it down there. Ooh. Sorry, I bring it up. Ooh. Ugh. Looks big on screen, but they are quite small. I think it's. Is it coming out? Can you see him? There he is. Just giving everyone a wave. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. I wonder if I can scare him back in just for now. Get back in, get back in, please. Nice and gentle. Ooh. So he's eager to come out. I don't blame him. It's a very hot day as well, so I'm a bit sweaty. He might be a bit sweaty. So I am not going to be putting him in the enclosures. I made, I don't know if you saw on the label, it is a breeding pair, a his and hers. So we have a his and hers matching homes that I made yesterday. I forgot to record the process, just too excited that I was getting two new jumping spiders and I went off and did it. I'm now going to put these back on the side and make some very small temporary um, enclosures for them which are going to look ugly now because it's all last minute. Be right back. Alright guys I am back and uh, it's not going to be very fancy but uh, I'm using a container that you're often buy your live food from. So the in this case this had large um, brown crickets in. Now they make really good containers actually. I avoid using them for ages because when they were three and two they had food in them. <laughs> um, but they're clear plastic and they have tons of tiny little holes so they're very well aerated. So they actually make pretty good enclosures for small spiders and stuff so I've made two because obviously these 
aren't going to go in together with each other um, until they're a little bit bigger and then I will breed them. It will be my first breeding project um, in this little hobby that I've started. So again another one, see the pet shop put L on there, the large crickets. Can't get it off annoyingly but that's okay. That will be the bottom bit where I'm going to put substrate. So here we've got the lids. Now the worst thing is they put stickers on um, to say brown crickets. And the sticker has sort of left the glue, which does look ugly. Um, I don't know if that's because I put water on first, so the paper came off. The paper that was the part of the sticker, leaving the glue behind. I tried giving it a little bit of a scrub with a nail brush, but uh, it's still very much on there. I can see through it, and there's only a small bit, so I'm not overly concerned. Um, this one's got a lot less on it, let me just dry it and you'll see it. And this one I tried to get the sticker off before I put it on the water. So I am thinking, as some advice out there, if you're going to do something very similar or you have got stickers on clear things, to take the stickers off while the sticker is completely dry. Because there's a lot less glue on this one and uh, my hands were wet so possibly that's where my uh, oops, sorry, where my hands are, but there's a lot less stick on this one. So, um, bit of advice. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these standing upright like this. Um, so I'm going to cut across the bottom of the lid, and this will be the bottom of the enclosure. Um, like so, I just get a pair of scissors, and I kind of want to do roughly the same. What can I do this? Is it pushing my luck? And I'll do about four or five centimeters up, two inches roughly. Alright, here we go. So now these bits will be permanently on. I might fix them in place with a bit of sellotape. And that way I can also fill them up with what I'm about to do with some soil or substrate. It'll set up there with a nice bit of weight because of the substrate and then I'll have access to it through the top bit which will go on like so I may put a little bit of sellotape on the bottom across here and then it'll act like a hinge very low budget but now you've got yourself a nice little enclosure be back in a second Welcome back, um, as you can see I have completed two enclosures now, I did run out of sellotape, did run out of sellotape, I ran out of sellotape, uh, off the clear sellotape, so I had to be forced to use ugly black duct tape and some sort of rope tape, I'm going to focus, um, so they're not as pretty as I would like them to be, but that's how they sort of work. Um, I have put some sphagnum moss in half of the enclosure, uh, just to help with the humidity, it helps with fresh oxygen, somewhere for some of the bugs to hide. Um, what I'd like to do with the jumping spiders is to put a few bits of food in there, but food that I know can't climb up to disturb them should they decide to go molting or something so they can eat essentially as and when they want to if I put anything in there that can claw, um, climb up I generally will put it in there for a few hours and if they don't if it's still alive I will then remove it but generally I'll put in things like the small mealworms that aren't the best of climbers um, although I haven't done enclosures like this before so I am uh, going to be watching to see if the mealworms will use these aerated holes at the side to climb up. If they do, then I will be removing them. Um, although these are, by the looks of it, very small guys, so might not be using mealworms at first. I do have bean weavers. Uh, where are they? Here's my culture. I've got tons of them at the moment. 
So I would just put a couple of those in and uh, see how they get along. So like I said, bottom bit, I have uh, duct taped it at the sides to create a sturdy seam and at the bottom filled up with uh, soil, it's predominantly soil with a little bit of cocoa fibre and um, then yeah, just sellotape on either side so that they don't have access to any of the stickiness of any of the sellotape just as a sort of hinge sphagnum moss and a few twigs that I did take from outside nature but these have been soaked in disinfectant water and then cooked in the oven for a very long time um, and they have been in a previous enclosure um, and they were fine, they didn't go mouldy or anything um, and the creatures that lived in that enclosure were fine as well so I have now two so let's move these guys in let's do one at a time so this guy is already half open and wanting to join in the world so these are really pretty they're red and I love jumping spiders I think they're just fantastic they're one of my favorite arachnid of all I don't have many arachnids but these guys are the main reason I actually got into spiders so I'm just going to see if I can just Either show them to the enclosure or I'm just gonna hold it near the stick, see if it's something he wants to jump up on. No, he's not moving much. So let's remove them all together. Can you see that? Let's see if we can get closer in. Ooh. Absolutely tiny. Ooh. Is it moving? It's moving in the wrong direction typically. I do have a little, uh, actually, it's a huge paintbrush. Give a nice jelly poke in the right direction. It's like, hey, hey, what's going on? What just touched me? Uh, this one is the male, and he's quite pretty. He's red on top, black legs. He's both red on his abdomen and his carapace, which is quite nice. It's quite nice for the male to be colourful. Go on. In you go. Don't hide underneath. Okay, and he's in. Can't quite see him. He is behind the tape, just here. Uh, I will go ahead and just close it, and hopefully, and very quickly, I'm hoping he will move up to the top. Of the enclosure. Now, while we are here, let's make sure I will put. the male logo up on the top so we know in the future which one's which as you can see there male logo and uh, can you see him perhaps if we look through oh oh other way see his redness but the plastic's a bit 
on the bubbly side, and it? Side shot. Oh, I'm not very good at this controlling the camera. Okay, we'll give him a couple of seconds. Find his bearings. Uh, I'll put him there. And let's now get the female out. Female. Oh, she is much bigger. She's not as red, but she's quite nice. She's got like an orange bum. So instead of red, she's more orange. If I have that, can you see her? Uh, come on, camera. Come on, camera. Come on. Oh, you almost had it. Come on. Just wants to focus on my thumb. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anyway, let's just get her in the enclosure. Like I said, she's a bit bigger than the male, which is nice. I'm just going to take the whole tissue out. Just a little bit. Let's show it towards the sticks. Can't see it at the moment from that your angle, but she's looking. Jump. Sorry guys, it's not the best angle. It's more important that I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Bit. See her now? She's like a nice beigey orange colour. She is bigger than the male. Now I'll just pick her in as well. She's like, hey, don't be poking me. Come on. Oh, fangs up. She did not like that. Not fangs. Front legs. There she is. Oh, don't jump out. Don't jump out. And, uh, oh, you can't see it. She's waving her arms up. You're going to see her jump. She's waving it in the middle of nowhere. Gary declares her up, I think. That ugly sticker is in the way. Ugh. So the male hasn't moved much. I might just give him a little. Friendly suggestion on what direction he should go. You think, no, I like it down here. But I don't really want him down there now. There we go. Got him out of there. 
is hiding still close to the floor but there we have it a quick um, DIY project is not the best I was thinking because they were bought as breeding pairs that they might have been a bit bigger so that's why I prepared a bigger enclosure an important part of the hobby is to have plenty of size enclosures ready just in case the only issue I guess with ordering online that you don't know a hundred percent what size you're getting they do often give you size guides but you know so I will keep you updated with these two uh, my intentions will be to basically keep them separated for one to two molts um, one to two molts uh, till they get a half decent size uh, I will do a little bit more research on exactly what size there is their maximum um, and roughly do it by maybe a quarter less than that, 25% less than maximum being hopefully late juveniles. Female is much bigger which is a nice size she needs to be bigger so I'm, I'm assuming they're from the same sort of generation they could be from the same litter, they could be brother and sister um, luckily it doesn't matter <laughs> I will. Um, I think I'll attempt to breed them once they've moved into their bigger enclosure. Because I would like the female to be having her egg sac in that bigger enclosure, to be honest, and not in these little ones. So these are just temporary. I will be watering them now, and um, I won't be putting any food in there until tomorrow. I absolutely love these guys. I am intent. Uh, assuming like she has now, I don't know if you can see that she is up on the top there most of the time you'll find them up the top there so I'm hoping that their, most of their webbing will be on this face bit here so that when I open this up I don't destroy too much of their webbing um, yeah, I'll climb down, they'll get their food they've got plenty of airflow from the sides and um, I have plenty of moisture just wait until they get a little bit bigger and uh, we will have our first breeding session with these guys that's the their only breeding pair that I actually own um, other than that I hope you liked the video if you do please thumbs up got any suggestions help criticism please leave it be kind I am new to this hobby uh, but all help is welcome and advice uh, if you like it let me know as well uh, I like the stagnant moss this is new so I haven't put this in any of my other enclosures so I'm hoping that it stays quite nice and green just to add color and obviously moisture and uh, if it photosynthesizes then obviously it's fresh air as well for them and uh, yeah click that subscribe Hit the bell icon as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.